Slavery shall be loaded captive into what? Into all nations. Uh -huh. And Jerusalem shall be brought down of the Gentiles. So Jesus Christ prophesied the same thing Moses said. You and Israelites are breaking God's law or going into slavery. And Jerusalem shall be brought down of the Gentiles. Who's in Jerusalem now? But you want to go to Jerusalem right now. Christ. What's the word Christ called him right there? I think this is what I'm saying. Gentiles. Because that's what he said. They're to just that job. Everybody in the Bible is right here. You know when they do that, what they're telling us? They're telling our children that we ain't nobody. But let's see what God said. How that job look like? Job 30 and 30. Job 30 verse 30. My skin is black upon me. No, my skin is white. My skin is black upon show? me. Black. But in this society, we didn't know Job as a black man. <laughs> Das Buch von Psalm 147, Vers 90. Er zeigte Jakob sein Wort und seine Statuen und seine äh, und die, äh, die Strafen Israel. Er hat mit keiner Nation so Moses is talking about Jesus the Christ. He was not making a reference to Muhammad. When he said raised among your brethren, the brethren were the 12 tribes, the 12 brothers, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. He was not talking about Ishmael. Ishmael was not in the wilderness Thank with you. Moses. Now let's get the prophecy. Come on, the Grenadian people have lost their heritage. Right now you're called black, you're called Negro, you're called something other than what God called you. That's the million dollar question. Who are you? Who is the so-called black man and black woman in Grenada? The brick lifted mouth shall what? Shall keep knowledge, shall keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the law, the law at his mouth. The law is what you're supposed to be doing. That's the knowledge of God. The laws of God is the knowledge. Why are you That's why he went into the I'm going to show you that the slave ships is in the Bible. And the slave ships is in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You're saying the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt is a Greek word, Greek word for bondage. God don't bring us into bondage again, to slavery again with what? With ship! With ship! So this is something that they would often do. Remember, the so-called white man, he doesn't have a true heritage. Right. What he does is he grabs uh, uh, something, another culture, and he takes on that, that, that same culture. He doesn't have that that he claimed for himself. So guess what? The best, best heritage that he would take claim of, of course, it would be the Israelites, because they are chosen by God. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden. See that? Right now, the land of Israel is a wilderness. It's a waste place. Many of the vegetations that you see here are imported here. Okay, uh, the crops that are grown are imported here. The Lord of heaven and earth said he's going to make the waste place, this wilderness that is here, like the Garden of Eden. When is that? When the 12 tribes are gathered together I under why you're here Messiah. Land, you're going to have some, have some experiences that you're going to feel like, like the, they were almost deja vu. You're going to be feeling like, man, I, 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 felt, I haven't felt this before. You know how many times, brothers and sisters, that came here and then walked away with those kind of feelings, that knowing something that they, they feel that connectivity. Brethren, we've been doing this for, I've been doing this for years, and I done seen it time, and time and time again. 
time again. And I know that wasn't just no, just no overwhelmed by some good feeling. Right. It has to be something that they were making a, a connection with, with their historical origins, you know. So like I said, brother, again, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great trip, huh? It's gonna okay. be a great trip. It's gonna be a lot to learn. Now I a lot see, to see. I see a brother on YouTube. I forgot his name, but he has dreadlocks. What? I remember his name. Hoshua. Omari Hoshua. Omari Hoshua. Uh, uh, you know anything about that brother? Yeah, he's the brother that lives over in uh, a place called Tellarod. Tellarod? No. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. No, no. Please, but is he please, please. Uh, all the way there? What I mean is... I'm clear. I'm clear with you. Okay. Saying, brother. Yeah, well, brother's on. He's on his own agenda, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's been like that for a while, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, quite naturally, we don't want to, you know, out of respect, you know, we're not going to, you know, downplay nobody because everybody, you know, first and foremost, we understand, man, our people have been damaged, bro. Yeah. You hear me? I mean, for real, our people have been really damaged through this whole experience of now trying to find themselves. Right. And they get caught up with all kind of isms and schisms that got them all over the place in terms of trying to find out this whole this whole element of, of the essence of, of that being, that personal being, that essence of, as it relates to the to 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 to, to Yah, to, to God, to whatever you want to call it. And they all and sometimes they be all over the place. Sometimes stuff becomes overwhelming man. And as a result of it, there's a lot of brothers and sisters saying that have been casualties in this, man. You know? Uh, uh, we have we're principally in three cities in in Israel, Arad, Dimona, and Mitzpah Ramon. That's principally where you find the, the, the largest concentration of our community, which Dimona quite naturally is the biggest. That's the largest population of all cities. The sea is the lowest point on planet Earth, so you can really go down there now. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Shalom. Bishop? Yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you got yeah. a lot of issues? Sure, of course. Oh, I'm, I'm looking for it. Don't wait me here. Don't wait me here. How many brothers are there? Twelve. Five. Twelve. Five brothers at you? Oh, you mean here? Today? In Adios. Yeah. Five. 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 To his anointed, to those uh, in search of truth, justice, peace, mercy, love, on this plane of our existence, I greet you in the Hebrew tongue. Shalom Aleichem. Hallelujah. How was the journey over? Rough. Well, we went to Moscow first. Then we, uh... It has to be rough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Russians, Russians are some of the coldest people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention, I mean, we understand why, too. We understand why. Where's everybody from? Uh, New York. Uh... Connecticut. Where? Connecticut. Okay. Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. New York as well. New York. Uh, Virginia. Which city? Uh, Hampton. Oh, okay. Hampton. Went to Virginia Wesley in one year. 
Oh, okay. And uh, Norfolk Hampton. I mean, Norfolk North liaison North to our communities North in North South North Africa. Africa. Uh, we have several cities down there, several hundred brothers and sisters that are under the auspices of the community's guidelines and teachings. And um, uh, we, we're, we're, we're all over the globe. Um, but this is home base. Uh, Demona's home base. Um, there's a lot of history. Naturally, I'll be one of your primary hosts between myself and Tour Haralia, who you met yesterday uh, coming in. Um, one of the other, another one of the ministers, Sar Eli Akin. If you've ever watched the um, you know, YouTube clips, uh, he and I tag team on taking sacred visitations out. And so a lot of people will post his commentary when he's moving around the land. So he'll be also uh, involved in, in hosting the brethren. Um, we are, uh, we number about 3,000 at this current time. Uh, I don't want to, I know I'm not preaching to the, to the choir, or I am preaching to the choir in some respects, but I don't want there to be, you know, any uh, uh, missed opportunities to find out exactly what our positions might be and what our history is. If you have some, want to get some clarity on any issues along the way, that's what I do. Uh, in Hebrew, information is, is uh, hasbara. It comes from the verb lehasbir, which means to give an explanation. And it just so happens that I actually, I love my job, and uh, there are no questions that are out of bounds. So I, I want to make that clear from, from, from the get-go. Um, I personally grew up in Washington, D.C., um, was born and raised there, conceived in Philly. Um, I was involved in... Uh, I was pursuing political science, thinking that that was the uh, something my calling to assist my and in, in the upliftment of my people, and uh, that was what was being pushed. And I was a little bit too young to have been a Panther, because I had that kind of anger. Once I once I read a certain cadre of books, I was a real angry black man in America. Uh, but the Panthers were pretty much finished at that particular point, although. Uh, Sister Amalia's husband, he was a panther in the D.C. area. He's here. He'll probably come up and, 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 and greet the brethren as well during this time. Um, so I, I pursued what they told us was the, the, the way to, you know, assist in the people, political empowerment, economic empowerment, dabble in, dabbled in real estate in D.C. for a little while. But that never satisfied me. I said, I got to find out, first of all, who are we? <laughs> and uh, in, that, in that search, it led me to that we were we're Hebrew Israelites, and uh, right about that time is when uh, a jurisdiction was being opened in the D.C. area. I actually became the first brother uh, as part of that under the auspices of the kingdom here in, in Demona. And so the rest is history. I could fast forward because from that point on, I was satisfied in terms of what it was that, uh, 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 what my calling was, what my purpose was, my mission. And any questions that I've had on that path, even questions that back then I didn't even think to ask, uh, have been answered on this, on this path. Uh, we don't hold a monopoly on truth, um, but we make truth our centerpiece. Uh, truth becomes our centerpiece relative to uh, what we teach, what we, how we apply those teachings and apply them in our daily lives here. And so it's very, um, uh, we have a, naturally a long history, 50 years. We're celebrating 50 years this year of our uh, arrival in this land. The first two, ben Ami and Prince Kiskiyahu, who arrived here in May of 1968. And so this year we're celebrating 50 years of our presence in the, in the land. 51 years, 50 plus one years of being outside of America. And so uh, I think that, that speaks for itself. Um, Again, we know we number at this particular point about 3,000, and uh, uh, we will live, in a little while. We will take a walking tour of the of the village, which is the centerpiece of the the lifestyle. When we first arrived, uh, we were more or less welcome. <laughs> they were just really trying to figure out what to do with us, as I'm sure when you all showed up, you could probably pick that up. And I don't know how how. In how deeply interrogative they were, but sometimes they can call you out and, and hold you up for a while, inquiring what what is your what's the nature of your business, uh, because there's a lot of fear, and it's understandable. You know, we we're not we're not upset with them. 
I, I, again, I spent a lot of time in South Africa, and I'm not mad at white folks for wanting to hold on to South African lands, as beautiful as that land is, and as, as wealthy as it is. Uh, so not mad at them at all, especially knowing the history as to how we lost it in the first place. So ain't nobody to blame but, you know, ourselves, so we're not mad at them. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we have a job to do here, and uh, we've been focused on that for the last, um, uh, since 1969, when the remainder of the group came out of Liberia and settled here. I was not with them at that particular point. Ten years later was when I was awakened, and I would ask the question, I said, so if we're Hebrews, so when do we, when do we go to Israel? And the, the question was immediately answered. And that was one of the questions that bothered ben in 1966. He had been part of a community called Abeda Cultural Center in Chicago, and of course, there were a lot of different camps throughout the states, from the dating back to the turn of the century, Bishop <coughs> C.H. Masons, the Prophet William Crowdy's, and others that were teaching our identity. And so he would ask his elders in Chicago, well, when do we go back to Israel? And everybody would say, it's not time for whatever reasons, this, that, and the other. And that didn't rest with him. And so very, during a very, very crucial time in history of African Americans, uh, sandwiched between the Newark and the Watts uprisings, uh, during the, the record snowstorm that paralyzed Chicago in the Midwest in 1966-67, um, he, he received a vision. He was on his bed, wrestling, tossing, turning, praying, meditating, and he received a vision from the angel Gabriel, which instructed him it's time to begin the exodus of our people, and that the exodus would be in the following year. He said it lasted approximately 45 seconds. He was initially not so forthcoming with the, uh, with the vision, excuse me, and forthcoming with. Um, and so after, a, after a few days, he began to tell close confidants and to his relative surprise, he said that uh, they, they didn't laugh, him, uh, laugh at him, and, and, uh, but they actually supported him. They actually brought information that said that uh, prophecy said that we should return the same way that we left. So we began to look in West Africa for where we could return back. And then another brother came and uh, taught a class about the ships that we were waiting for, that ships, and by definition, could include an airship, could include a plane. A plane was an airship, it was a ship, it was a vessel. Uh, another brother came and brought the, the news about the uh, Liberian Constitution, which actually uh, countries founded for and by former uh, African slaves, that uh, its constitution required that they open their doors to us in our return. And indeed, the two brothers who went uh, a couple weeks after that, who were sent into Liberia to, to investigate that, uh, they did find that that was uh, the truth, and they were, they were welcomed. The first president, or the president we encountered there, President Tubman, he did welcome us and actually assist us in the very, very early beginnings with some land and uh, a little money to help clear the, the areas. Uh, you probably know the history. We, we had tents. Uh, the brothers were so zealed up, uh, they brought tents with them. Sears and Roebuck tents. Nobody knows about Roebuck anymore, but uh, they say that was the black man. I don't know if that's urban myth or not. But nevertheless, uh, those tents dry rotted within a very, very short season. Monsoon rainfall, malaria, dysentery swept through the camp, malnutrition. Uh, we were still eating white rice. We were eating cans, canned sardines and saltine crackers from the local Lebanese shops. We didn't know anything about growing food. You know, who does in, in, in America even today? Uh, very, very few of our people would, would survive if those Kroger's and Safeways and whatever else get shut down, uh, Piggly Wigglies or whatever it is. And so uh, we, had, uh, we had dug wells. Uh, we tell the children, don't go and play by the wells. Children being children, kind of falls in. They're afraid even to come and let us know until it's too late. We lose. Uh, uh, daughter Kana. Uh, so these are part of the sacrifices that were made in those, those early uh, days in uh, our wilderness experience. We consider that our wilderness experience. Uh, we felt we had an outer perimeter of three and a half years within which to go through that in preparation for coming into the Holy Land. We felt we could not enter directly into the land without going through that, without ridding ourselves of those 
negative attributes that define slaves. I mean, we, didn't, we, were, we were not taught to love ourselves, so naturally you couldn't love your brother and sister uh, without loving yourself. And so that was an experience we had to go through. Uh, we were broken down. We were humbled in that wilderness and humbled to the point where uh, ben and his close friend, childhood friend even, um, Prince Gabriel were together bet between them. They didn't have a penny one day. And the woman came through with bunches of bananas. And you could, with a penny, you could, even now in Liberia, you could buy something to fill you up with a penny. Uh, it wasn't possible. They didn't have it between them. And so that was, that was the, low, the low experience. And again, malaria, dysentery, the suffering. Uh, Two-thirds of the brothers and sisters out of the initial 400 that left in 1967, two-thirds of them came back to the Americas. Uh, we didn't hold any animosity. It was a very difficult experience. Not, it wasn't made for everybody. I tell people all the time, I don't do snakes. Uh, they did snakes in, in the wilderness. Green and black mamba snake, a very, very poisonous variety. They did driver ants that come by the billions and will sweep through the camp. And if, they, if you're in their way, they're going to be all up in your clothes, biting and what have you. Um, and so those were the pioneers, and we still give them great, great cabot, great honor. Uh, out of the initial nearly 400 that left the states, uh, 138 survived that, survived in the sense of the, uh, of the fortitude to complete the journey. 138 completed and came into the land of Israel. We're all here by 1969. All of them were, were here. Uh, initially, we were welcomed. Again, they didn't really know what to do with us. Uh, we had access to health care. We had access to um, uh, housing, education. And within nine months, the law of return, by 1970, the law of return was rewritten. A new clause was put in there. Instead of just saying that you were here to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then the new law said you had to say that, prove that you had a Jewish grandmother or mother. And, of course, we weren't able to do that. And so all of the, all of the uh, uh, benefits, all of the, the services were cut off. Um, we began a 20-plus year war of attrition between us, us and the government. And um, no health care. We literally couldn't afford to get sick. Uh, no schooling for the children. Start teaching our own children. We weren't going to leave them ignorant. You got to teach the children, give them some, teach them discipline and, and history and culture and what have you. Um, we had to live very close together because we didn't have again access. We didn't have work permits, so you couldn't you couldn't really. You know, we were struggling, scuffling, and so we developed a communal system. Well, fast forward because all of that actually turned out to be a blessing, just as it was in the days of uh, Joseph and his brethren. Uh, his brethren certainly meant it for evil, but Yah meant it for good. And so when we look at that experience, we were forced. We literally couldn't afford to get sick, so we developed preventive health care, preventive health care measures. And primary, we're talking about diet. And so we go back to the, the Tanakh and the very, very first instructions for man relative to diet. Green herbs, all the herbs uh, bearing seed. That was our food. And so we became vegans. From the, from the time we set foot in this land, we have not consumed flesh. That doesn't mean that some of our next generation children, or maybe even some of the, 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 the elders who you know, felt like they had to have something, whatever, that, but those of us who have been lockstep with this idea, we have not consumed any animals in this, in this community uh, in our history here in this land upon our arrival here. We were in that transition in Liberia. But since we've landed here, we've been strictly vegan. Um, we make exercise a, a major component. We make the, the consumption of water a, a major thing. And by the way, if nobody's told you yet, be sure to be drinking your water. Uh, these next couple days, I mean, this is, this is typical for spring. We're, we're officially into the spring, uh, the new year. Uh, we know that... Your body is 70% water, your brain even more so. Uh, one of the first signs of dehydration is sluggishness. You're going to have that already coming from that side in the different time zones and jet lag. Uh, back pain, muscle, joint pain, whatever. Uh, you don't want to get to the more serious 
um, uh, repercussions of being dehydrated. Drink plenty of water. I can, I can pick up spirits. I mean, you know, racism is something you can smell. <laughs> you know, you can, you can smell. The last thing Israelis want to be called is racist. But several times I've been, I've been, I've been, been my, my anger has surfaced and I've had to address them and call them out about their racism. Um, they don't like it, and it's, you know, but, but they are. You know, most white folks in America don't know that they're racist. And so it's a, it's a global phenomenon right now. It's a global phenomenon. In South Africa, the same thing. The brothers, they, that's their land. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of them whites don't want to give up that land and give up their privilege. And so it's going to be, it, this ain't over. Mm -hmm. This ain't over. And so it's a global thing. Right. Uh, but, and it's no different here. No different here. But in this land, you have that dynamic of Mizraki, um, North African, Sephardic Jews, and Ashkenazi. 50-50 almost. And to this day, I mean, they'll tell you that there is racism practiced against them as Moroccans, as Iraqis, as Egyptians, as Yemenites, and so forth. It's practiced against them. Uh, they, they don't have the better jobs and the high you know, positions in, in the country like that. It's more to the European side. But the strange thing is that, and it, and it took me a long time to realize this, there's a great piece on Al Jazeera. It's called Israel's Great Divide. It's about an hour long, and it focuses on the Mizraki, a Sephardic, I mean uh, Ashkenazi divide. The Mizraki have a deeper inferiority complex than most of our people in America, relative to being African. You know, they, the ones who are leading the charge when they have protests that, and they're shouting and carrying placards that say death to the Arabs, who's leading that charge? Arabs. Because if you're Moroccan, you're an Arab. You're an ethnic, you might be religiously Jewish, but you're ethnically an Arab. So they have a self-hatred that defies logic. And so you, you can see that that plays out, but the more that we are able to, to influence them and, and the more that time goes along, uh, they're going to come around to the senses and understand uh, the, 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 the foolishness of racism. This is, this is a, a superficial thing. It, it's, it's, it, it goes much deeper than that. And, uh, and we can move beyond it. We don't forget it. You know, but we are able to turn the play. We, we, we lay the foundation. Bo, we're able to lay the foundation. I mean, it's important that people understand that this is Africa and we're in Africa. You know, this is very important to, to know that. But, um, you know, once, we, once, once they accept that, if they got a problem with that, that, that ain't our problem. That's their problem. Because of ultimately what it means is that they're going to have to accept direction and instruction from some black, black men. Right. And that's difficult for them. That's not our problem. We, 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 we bring the truth, and wherever it, uh, wherever it lies, that's, you know, we, we know who you are by how you respond. My next question is this. Yeah. I want you to like me on this. You have the Palestinians, yeah. and then you have Afro-Palestinians. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to see Demona. Yeah. We also here to, we want to discuss and talk to the Afro-Palestinians, not the Palestinians, Afro-Palestinians. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we would like to, we want to pay a visit to the refugee camp where they have many of the brothers from... Asylum seekers. Right, asylum seekers. Now, many of them who have, who come from these places have a lot of skills, uh, things that could possibly benefit, not just the land of Israel, but even Demona. Yeah. So I, I, my question was, did y'all have any influence or any say-so regarding um, those men and women over there? Maybe just men, I'm not sure. Maybe just men over there, maybe men and women. It, it's, it's men inside. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the ones that, have, that were in the camp. I've got good news and bad news for you. Okay. The bad news is that we won't be going to Holo. That's where they kept them in detention. It was an open air place. Uh, the good news is that they released them. <laughs> they, released them. they released them, but it's 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 political. It's mm -hmm. tricky. They haven't changed their policy relative to wanting to deport them. Mm -hmm. That continues, and it's it's a it's an outcry in the streets of of Israel amongst the African population and the, uh, the larger white population opposing that idea. Um, but 
the Supreme Court ruled that they had to close down the facility, so all the brothers were let out. But they're let out at the same time that they're training ICE officers, <laughs> I don't know what they call them, but they're, they're ICE officers, to go around and round them up. So you might well be caught up in something like that as we move around. They might come up and ask you for your ID. You know, and if you can't prove that you, you know, you, who you are, you know, then, then you might get swept up in that. Um, so, uh, did we have... <laughs> so, so, politically, did we have any say-so in any of that? No, we, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not at that level. You know, they, they make dumb decisions and we might write an op-ed and say, hey, that's a foolish decision, uh, uh, I, I, which I've done. Um, I wrote about uh, when the Minister of Interior in 2012, I think 2011, 2012, made a statement. He said that Israel is a white man's country. I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I wrote an op-ed and they published it. Um, in fact, it was the last weekend that they actually published op-eds from, from, from the public. Uh, paper took that page out <laughs> and didn't use it anymore. And it was during the uh, holy day season of Sukkot that it appeared. Um, so where are they located? Where are they at now? They're, released they're, they're in the streets. They're moving around there in South Tel Aviv or wherever they can find refuge or homes. There, we had a meeting on uh, this past Shishi, on, on this past Friday. We had a meeting with three representatives. We had a, a, a member of the asylum seekers themselves. He's an Eritrean. There was a member of a, of a university uh, group that came out and said, they, they call themselves the movement to stop the deportations. And the third representative was from, she's a rabbi, and she was representing uh, uh, that's another, another element of human rights. That's what she represented, human rights organization. And so uh, we met with them, and uh, they, they have a rally this Shabbat on the 24th, uh, that evening. This, this coming Shabbat? This coming Shabbat. It'll What's be in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. It'll, it'll be 8.30 in the evening in Tel Aviv. There'll be a rally. Um, they want us to participate. Uh, we have our positions relative to when we do and do not uh, raise our voices and, and show our faces. Um, agree with thine adversary while in the way with him, appear less harmless than a, than a dove, right? And so we, we, we strategize on when, we, when and when we engage the adversary. Um, and we feel that's, I mean, that's, that's why we're still here. You know, we, we, have, we have interests. We have interests here. And so, um, but we are, uh, uh, we may participate. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what is Moses speaking about? The curses that would fall upon the children of Israel for breaking his commandments. Who are the children of Israel? The black men and black women scattered throughout Africa. Many of them scattered from Rwanda. Uganda, Zaire, North America, South America, yes. Brazil, and some of you here in the land of Tel Aviv. Right? That's right. Read on, verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Your sons and daughters will go into slavery. Who's speaking? Moses. You know? And thine eyes shall look and fell with longing for them all the day long. So when your sons and daughters were taken from you, you had no power to get them back, read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a na nation which thou knowest not eat up. Colonialism. Now Moses is telling you another nation will steal the resources to your lands. That's it's right. called colonialism. Read it again. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Go ahead. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt only be oppressed and crushed always. Are you black men oppressed and crushed always? You better believe it. You can go in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, America, England, you will always be oppressed and crushed always. Read it again. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed 
always. Jump down to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemy. Therefore shall you serve your enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger. You got to serve your enemies for food. And in thirst. You got to serve your enemies for water. And in nakedness. You got to serve your enemies for clothing. And in want of all things. If you want refuge, you got to serve your enemies. If you want education, you got to serve your enemies. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Did that happen to us in history? Step up. Moses said the Israelites would have yokes of iron on their neck. Did this happen? Yes, it happened to us. What does this prove? We are the real Israelites. The Bible speaks of. We fit the curses of the Bible, not the modern day Israelis. They didn't go into slavery with yokes of iron. That happened to our people, us. Where the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. That's right. Now, watch this. Verse 468. And I'm going to get your question in a second, brother. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Moses warned the black 12 tribes of Israel. If you break the commandments, you're going to go into Egypt again on ships, meaning you're going to go into slavery again with ships. Read. By the way thereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. You wouldn't see the promised land no more again. Read. Right. When and you, there when you talk ye about shall be road sold road. unto uh, your enemies. Once you get off the ships, what's going to happen? Is good people for you. Read. Ye, there thou yeah, shalt be sold unto your people. enemies. You? For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. Slave women. I want you to look good here. What happened when the blacks got off the slave ships? What happened to them? Do you see what what's going on here? They were being sold on auction blocks. Sold. Do you see this? Where are we reading this? The Bible. None of them Israelis can, can confute this. Like the book, do some of say, oh, speak the Hebrew. Go into the, we ain't going to the Hebrew. We want to make sure everybody understands us. Uh, yo, right. yo. Everybody going to understand yes. the Israelites went into slavery. Everyone's going to understand. You're going to find out the Israelites fled from when Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. We fled through Egypt. We went down towards Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda. We went down towards Kenya, Nigeria. That's where we were for over a thousand years. Right. And it's all in the Bible. And we were told that there was very few black people, while well, people in Israel, other than the Mona. They said mm -hmm. there's nobody there. They're refugees, or uh, they said they was uh, not there anymore. In this, yeah. And guess what? That wasn't true. We, they were on the street. We yep. were teaching them. A lot of them. Some didn't understand English, but some did. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the ones that did, they listened, they got one of literature. Mm -hmm. Oh, crazy. Anything from Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, all of the Arab countries, we have authority under the Middle East African Diaspora Unity Council to organize those brothers and sisters. And so, because um, there's an African presence in all those lands I mentioned, and they're, they're not well known and not on the radar like that if you were to come here and not connect up or not know specifically where to go something you would never see it most unconscious black tours uh, would come they never see uh, black people and, and a lot of times they're so unconscious that when we see them walk, walking around in Jerusalem we try to get their eye to, to say hey where are you from or whatever and let them know hey you know come visit us or we'll show you where the where the Afro-Palestinians are that you're not going to get on, on your tour they'll act like they didn't see us you look at all elsewhere, and you, you know, you know the, the mindset of our people. Um, but you know, we, we keep you know moving, moving steadily forward. And so, under the auspices of the African Union, we are organized in that sense. And so, under Meetup, you have our community here, you have uh, the African asylum seekers, you have the Ethiopian community, and you have uh, Afro Palestinians and Afro Bedouin, all under that umbrella. And so uh, we're, we're helping the, you know, uniquely Israel is, is, is placed, Israel, this Israel is placed to be that peacemaker, to bring different elements to the table. When I'm in South Africa, there's a lot of friction sometimes between Zulu and Kosa and, or Suta, Soti and, and Zulu, uh, Swazi and different other peoples. And a lot of times you pick up on those things and you're able to say, okay, let's, we're going to put all that to the side and unite on some higher principles, and so a lot of times it, that, it takes us to do that. You and I coming out of our experiences in, in, in America, 
are, are uniquely positioned you know, to bring that to the table. Uh, what they're doing to them in South Africa is what they were doing in the 60s in America, economic empowerment. They just went through 22 years of that, and they realized that that, that was a trick. So now they're talking about economic empowerment. You know, political empowerment first, they gave them you know, the Constitution, and that was a trick. Uh, so now they're, they're at the point now of, uh, of, of awakening and they can really hear our message because we come from we come from experience. We know we know what the tricks are. They they're Hebrews, so it would it it would take <coughs> Hebrews and Judah to go to go back and do it. <coughs> but the, the, most of the Afrocentric Kemetan community they're not they're not they're not thinking about leaving America, <laughs> you know. So any other round of questions that might have come up in, as a result of our moving around? We just got one more stop. I have a question. Yes, sir. I hear you mention um, Judah. What about the other tribes? Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I know I know the um, the uh, IUIC's uh, perspective on on that as far as the, the breakdown delineation of the tribes. We uh, we consider ourselves Judeans. Um, we feel that, that there is, it is time now for the gathering of the other tribes. Uh, we feel that Judah had a, a role to be the gatherer of the tribes, uh, that we would be the, the forerunner, we would be the ones to, you know, to, 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 to be the vanguard of the movement. And so we can see that unfolding, and we, we, we feel that, that we're positioned to, to be big brother in that sense. Um, but we do not... Uh, see the, the neat breakout of the different tribes according to the places that they were taken. One of the big disputes I have is that uh, a lot of the camps are talking about 2019 as being the end of the 400 year captivity. And I would simply say, well, what, happened, what happens to those that were taken as, as early as the 1500s and 1600s into the Caribbean and into South America and other places? When are you start? Are you, are you really just boxing in North American captivity into that, and so um, you know we don't we don't we don't see it as so neatly. We see it as all kind of you know uh, mingled in as a speckled as a speckled bird in this particular day. Um, I, I, again, I'm I'd, I'd like to hear you know other perspectives, but we do we do certainly recognize ourselves as those of Judah in that in that uh, regard. And I, I don't, uh, Obadi, who do we have here that might be Hispanic? I, uh, Amani, possibly? She may speak, I know that Ashadai speaks uh, Spanish fluently, and uh, I think our roots run that way, I'm not sure. Yeah, because again, we, we, we kind of, I don't know people's uh, previous names. You know, I wouldn't know what, what previous names were. We were all, you know, the new names that we've taken on in the first generation. Excuse me. And I'm um, into somewhat of, uh, how would I say, preventive health care from my Abba. He was the doctor, the cough cold formula or whatnot. And uh, I heard that y'all was coming. It was important for me to come and visit y'all, you know. I'm a little excited. <laughs> so, you know, welcome. And I hope that we can tie our hands together, you know, and fulfill what our greater goal is in worshiping the Creator. Right. Shalom. Shalom, brothers. Shalom. 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 Dom Israel I'm from Chicago, and I'm passing through the land as well. I've been here since last Monday. And um, Mosai has revealed to me a divine message that I'm here bringing across all the elders of all Israel and this by divine formation that you brothers are here because I actually was going to make a stop to meet you as well, Elder, and to reveal the information to you as well, to be passing through to you. So if we have that time set up, you know, we'll be, I'll be able to show you what the Most High revealed to me. I revealed it to the elders here. You know, they understand and they receive the message wholeheartedly. And, you know, we're going from there. The Most High is doing some very powerful things. And so I am not of any Israelite faction, group, or any camp of anything of that nature. I'm just here as a servant of the Most High to bring forth a message. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay.
שלום, שלום. שלום, מה נשמע? שלום, שלום. And also we would put Harofe behind his name, Artur Yehoshua Harofe. He is the director of our Ministry of Divine Preventive Health. This is, this is what we call the Akva School, Akva's Brotherhood, the Brotherhood School. Again, when we, now, this, this street right here did not exist when we first moved here. When we first moved here, those houses, the house that we were just in, didn't exist. This was the outskirt of the city when we moved here in the late 70s. And so it was a road that went, a one lane road that went up to the parking lot that's there. Now, this school was built in the 90, early 90s, 92, 93. And it was um, after we changed our status to where we became residents of the country. And we came up under the educational system, the social system, et cetera, et cetera. And so, the school was built with a help of a grant, a million dollar grant that a sister in the State Department negotiated for us. So we, you know, everybody's fighting on reparations. This school was built with some reparations, reparations money. Um, the first level is the primary school and, and secondary, and then the, uh, the high school is the three-story unit here, all right? Uh, we're gonna go to the back of the school at, for the moment. This is a training center, organic farm. Uh, this is chard, Swiss chard they'll call it. We call it Hebrew chard. Why? Because the seeds are saved and reused and so each cycle, after seven cycles, a, a plant really has genetically uh, transformed according to its environment. So long ago we, we've done that. Uh, that's Sheba. This is a this is a an herb that's used for uh, it's very bitter, but it's uh, good if you got a little stomach problem. Uh, I've grown okra. Uh, where is Sar? I mean Nasi Yadiel. He's not around. Or skinny. Yeah, that's what's happening now. Um, the brother who who operates. This is a. A greenhouse and the reason why he why it's, it's, it's looking like it is right now is because he's been in Kenya and Ghana he focuses he's a, um, a consultant and he actually brings systems and puts them in place in Kenya and Ghana and elsewhere in fact I'm getting ready to get him down to South Africa we just got five hectares of land in the Mpumalanga area as the uh, as a uh, an award from the Ndebele King it was part, it's a phased in project where we actually plan to build a village there. But we'll start off with a organic training center. Some of the young sons are going to start coming in May. They'll come here, stay 30 days for the first round, then and get acclimated, not just in organic agriculture, but in the lifestyle. Then we will start, you know, sending advisors and people on the ground to, to grow. Uh, the brothers were involved in a search for the barley to determine Aviv. And so, you have different species that, that are all around us through the wild barley. So this is a, you know, this is a major component of what we do in, in terms of aligning ourselves with, with the land, that the man has, a, has, a, has a, a link with the land. We were created from the, as it says in English, the dust of the earth. <laughs> Literally, it's you were created from the minerals of the soil and so that's verifiable because is there iron in the soil, calcium in the soil, potassium and so forth? Yes. Is it iron and potassium and calcium in your body? Absolutely. And if you have a deficiency of iron, you've got anemia, you've got a problem. But the plants in our view were what were raised to give us those minerals and to keep us in harmony with that. So at present we have a few Arab students from neighboring, I think it's Arara Hanegev, who are students here at the school. Okay. And they're in burgundy uniforms. The, the, uh, the, the Arabs realized that culturally we were much closer to what they wanted, what they would like to have and in trusting their sons. But again, we have those relationships with uh, Arabs and Palestinians. This is a mural that was put together. Um, the uh, history, that Dr. King, was his last speech 
uh, that night before talked about us getting to the promised land at a time when, when uh, J. Edgar Hoover was on record to say cut off the rise of the black messiah. And uh, when King makes the statement that we would get to the promised land the next day he's assassinated. Uh, this is uh, Prince Elkanan, uh, Saab Kuria, other brothers that went through Liberia. These are actually shots in Liberia. One brother took his five children. Wife didn't want to come. He took the five children, went to Liberia. He raised his little bitty children uh, in the uh, two and a half years we were there. This is an idea. This is the tents. These one of the tents that uh, they purchased and set up. They, they, they learned how to take the, the, the uh, bamboo and what have you and to, to erect a, uh, a shelter over the tent because you have to because that, that stuff dry rotted soon. Um, clearing the bush, they're, they're, they're hacking away at the bush to clear the land. We just sent a delegation uh, this past year, 67, marked 50 years, 2017 was 50 years. And so a group of the pioneers went back to the site where they had, had uh, done this and it was all overgrown again. And, but we have that on video. So it's a lot of, lot of history here, a lot of history. Um, this is the dedication of the school in, in, when we first had it built. This is how we used this is when we had our own schools. We would, we, this was in a bomb shelter. And so we used bomb shelters for multi-purpose rooms. Uh, we weren't going to allow our, our, our children to go uneducated. And so that was the foundation of what we call divine dedication. Um, some of those same principles now are present here. It's, it's a compromise and we lost a certain degree of control, but, but again, we're moving forward. And we've been allowed to have a lot of influence on the larger society because they, they too see what's going on here and they're saying, hey, we need to do this in our systems. We need to have uniforms in our system. We need to have um, uh, cultural, we, we have what we call uh, Elders Day. And we honor the elders. First, it started with our own elders and we would have a day and all the children would come out and we would set up and have a special affair for them give them gifts. We would send them on cruises and different things, you know. Um, and uh, the largest, then we started bringing in other members of the community just to, te to teach them, basically. And now the city is, is a co-sponsor of that particular day, and they're doing the same thing. Uh, School of the Prophets. We have our own college-level institute. We will actually pass through there. Um, I'm a graduate of our School of the Prophets in, with, with two degrees. Um, we, we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harvard, Yale, any of the best of them, you know, because those, you know, when they say higher education, how can you have higher education and you take Yah at the equation? But that's their, that's their idea of higher education. Uh, but how can you put water and, I mean, chemicals in the water that kill you and you call that higher? I mean, these were higher educated men and women that created neutron bombs and cancer-causing elements and, and brought the world to the brink of destruction. Uh, so we, we'll challenge them any day. This was ben Ami, what we call the significant victory, receiving his permanent residency. He was among the first five that got permanent residency. That, that was held right here in this square. And uh, again, that, these are some of the first, first generation of sons that went in, some of the daughters. We have what we call the Martin Luther King SCLC ben Ami Institute for a New Humanity. It's a conflict resolution center. Uh, based on the ideas of King, King in nonviolence, okay, but what was considered Benemy practi practical application. And so when the head of SCLC, his name was Charles Steele, when he came here in 2003, he was at the podium and he had seen and spent a few days with us, he broke down crying in the audience, you know, to, speaking to the audience. And when he got himself together, he said, what you all have accomplished here is the fulfillment of Dr. King's beloved community. And so that paved the way for us to actually establish the first international nonviolence or, or, or King and Benemy Center for reconciliation. Uh, other institute, this is, uh, I think that's Sheikh Ayi, but uh, in these, uh, some of the sisters of the Afro Palestinian communities. We're always coming together. These are Ghanaian. Right here. This is one of the priests. And, you know, because. He, he can, we can't afford him to be a full-time priest. He has to be creative in how he you know, <laughs> finances his priestly obligations. Uh, but he's also over the uh, physical plant at the school. How many years?
18 years. 18 years, so he get ready. He, he, he'll, be, uh, he'll be knocking off. But I, I, you notice I didn't say retire because that's not a word in our vocabulary. That's not a word in our vocabulary. But this is coin off to my beat. 67, it says retire. So, uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they make you retire here. Right. We we don't we don't pay that no mind. It just frees us up to do right. some other stuff. But they don't know how old we are anyway. We just that's keep true. On <laughs> here, it's two different sides of it. The chart here honors the pioneers that are still with us. It's 2017. Okay. So that was honoring when they left and went into Liberia. We were coming together. Everyone was in a line with their baby buggies and backpacks and everything, ready to start marching to Jerusalem. They surrounded the community. Police, IDF, the uh, army, dogs, tear gas. They had sharpshooters on the higher buildings around us. They had cordoned off the city. They were stopping buses and trucks from coming in. Um, they meant business that particular day. Just, and we just was gonna march. We didn't have no, brothers had staffs, but that's all we had. And uh, ben and me called it off. We stayed here and we fasted for five days. And uh, that was a turning point in the community's relations with the outside world because prior to that, most of the, most of the reports would say we were a cult, vegan polygamous cult. After that, we got more press and more exposure that, and, and, and the, the energy changed. Was that before or after, uh, Be I think her name was Beverly Smith? Came? Bev Smith. Bev Smith. That was before. That was before. That was before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bev Smith lost her job over that. That's our, that's our truck, that's our market truck. Uh, we're still paying for it. Collectively, every family pays 25 shekels, which is like $7 a month for uh, the payments and the upkeep of it. It's available for use for shopping whenever they need it, or if anybody, if you're moving, say if you're in work. A lot of us had to move out for, for space reasons. So they've, they've started to rent and buy uh, housing outside of the village here, the compound here. So if you're three, moving somewhere, you have three. Outside we're in three different cities, right. three different. But even inside Demona, mm. we're using homes. You you don't live in the in the village proper, okay. and so if you needed to, to to get the truck to move, it's available. Just get mm. the driver and schedule it, and you do it. We also we also have the land already for a new compound where we're going to build 282 units, family units, and our service areas will be in the neighborhood. It's a kilometer in this direction. The land is already there, it's been prepared. Now they're putting in the infrastructure, the plumbing, the electrical infrastructure. From that point, we start to build the homes. Okay, so we're gonna be moving out of this area and into another. Hello, <laughs> right. There's, there's And then they are given a debit card. We like that card. <laughs> This is Prince Kiskiahu. Nasser Shalom. Kiskiahu. Hey, Shalom. Wow. Shalom. Bishop Shalom. Netanyahu. And he's the bishop, the leader of the delegation that came up from Israel United in Christ. And uh, this is our pioneer. All one Jesus. of the pioneers, one of the members of the Holy Council. Holy Council. Wow. Member. And he's the one that ben -Ami came with here in 1968. Mm. And they came out to, to, to spy out the land. But he didn't know it at the time when they left Liberia to come here. He didn't know that he had a one-way ticket <laughs> <laughs> until they got back to the airport oh, and better me let him know that no, you have to stay. Mm. So he mm. stayed. Mm. His family was left in Liberia, but he stayed here and was here until the next year when everybody came. But he was able to lay the foundation and learn the land and and, and prepare us for when he could oh, receive the rest. So this is Prince hey, did a great work. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, now you should have told me. Look. <laughs> you, you, 
You should have called and let me know so that I would, you know. You know you like surprises. Man, <laughs> listen, let me, I want a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, because when you, when you look at me, mm -hmm. I remember when it was just me by myself. <laughs> and to look at this many brothers at coming at one time. Oh, How you doing? If I was a crying man, <laughs> if I was a crying man, I would just break down and start crying. Because I said, listen, Lord, I ain't never been nowhere where there ain't no black people. Just let me get back to some <laughs> black people. <laughs> We here. It's been We're 50 here. years. I mean, mm -hmm. in next month, mm -hmm. in the second of May, mm -hmm. I'll be in the land for 50 years. So I waited for 50 years mm -hmm. to see groups like this. Benami was very, very serious about our physical, about the upkeep of the temple. We know that this is the temple. The Jews are now. Literally, they are prepared to, to construct the third temple. And in order to do that, it would cause huge problems, which we're going to see when we go to Jerusalem. Okay? But their understanding is at a very base level. This is where you worship. Worship in Hebrew is la'avod. It means to work. So there's no difference between work and worship. To pray is another action. To prostrate yourself is another action. To dance, all those are separate entities or actions. But worship is literally work. Well, you see what we're reading so far. What's your name? Raphael? I like that name. It means to heal, a healer. So, Raphael, we've read to you so far a few curses. One curse was the Israelites would have yokes of iron on their neck. Right? Yeah, yeah. We read another curse that said they would be sold, right? Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What kind of ships? Slave ships. You see this, Raphael? This is called slave ships. This is the worst Holocaust of all time. You know how many black men died during over 100 million black men and women? died during the transatlantic slave trade. Bring it out. Now this wasn't all the Israelites, because a lot of us stayed back in the areas we were dwelling in, in Africa. That's right. Like when you read in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 10. I'm going to show where you're from. Yo, Nigeria. Oh, Ebo, Yoruba? That's Israelites right there. Give me Zephaniah, chapter 3, and verse 10. Bring it out. Oh, this is your day, Raphael. This is a good day for you. We want Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 2. You're going to find out that we have been divided as a people. Now it's unity time, solidarity time. We're going to come back as the mighty nation that we are. That's Zephaniah right. 3 and 10. The book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. My suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed. Well, Raphael, have you ever been to Ethiopia? Okay, in Ethiopia, in the capital, there's a Blue Nile River that goes out and it connects with the Nile. So the Bible's letting you know that beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, the dispersed of God's people would dwell. Jump down to verse 13. The remnant of Israel. The remnant of who? The remnant of Israel uh -huh. shall not do iniquity. So the remnant of Israel would be beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. The Blue Nile, which is located in, uh, what is it called? Addis Ababa. Uh, it goes and connects to the Nile. The Nile goes from Egypt, Tanzania, um, down towards the Congo. It goes down. You got Kenya on one side. You got um, give me Zaire. You got Rwanda. Nigeria is off to the side. Okay. The Bible's telling you the remnant of Israel would be dispersed in those areas. Read it again. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. Back to verse 10. Verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Where's Ethiopia? What continent? Africa. It's letting you know the children of Israel would be located in Africa. You understand what we're reading? Read it again. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter 
of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. You shall bring God's offerings. Now, the word Nigeria, Raphael, where, where does it come from, that word? Nigeria come from the the white man. Yes. And do you know what it means? I don't really know, but I think it's a nigga word. <laughs> it means black. It's a Latin word. It means black. I'm gonna show you that in the Bible. Give me uh, Acts chapter 13. I'm gonna show you that many of the prophets came from the areas of Nigeria. You know the Niger River, the Niger River. I'm gonna show you that in the Bible. I bet you didn't notice in the Bible. Watch this. The book of Acts. Chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. That was called nigger. That was called what? Nigger. That's N-I-G-E-R. That's the Niger River. That's hence the word Nigeria. It's telling you there were certain prophets and teachers that was called Niger or nigger because they came from those areas that we call today Nigeria. You understand? Even next to Nigeria, you have a country called Niger. N-I-G-E-R, correct? Read it again. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. So I bet in church they never read that to you. Did they ever read that to you in church? No, I'm never had to You see it? And, and not only the camp um, teaching yesterday, but we were able to um, go out and do cuts from the street, different interviews and so forth while we were having camp. Yes, I mean, Other than the morning? Yeah. If there is any place other than the morning in Israel where you have a lot of, a lot of, a big community of our people? Yeah, you have a ride, you have Mitzvah, you have... Bashava, Tiberius, up north in the Nigeria. They actually have a, 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 a big, like, a big community. Ashkelon. Ashkelon have people. No, I've been. Yeah, I've been. Hey, Shalom brothers, Shalom sisters. Allegedly, this is Mount of Temptation where Christ uh, was tempted by Satan, allegedly. Um, take with a grain of salt. There's still a tourist spot over here. There's a lot of nations here all over the place. Got some Afro-Palestinian brothers here. One right there on the left. Um, we met one, we're gonna meet one later on. His name is Yasser. There's busloads of people, uh, black brothers and sisters. Hopefully brothers got on top of it and got flies for them, you know? So that's what we're doing right now. If you can look right here, you got a lava move. You're all in the way. You, you, you got a camel here. Lava wants to ride the camel. I want to ride the camel. No, I don't ride no damn camel. For the quarter on the Welcome to Jericho. Come here. Come here. Okay, I'm coming over. Thank you, brother. This is Bomela from Jericho. No chemicals. No chemicals, this tastes good. Yes, this is sweet. And Jericho banana, very sweet. Where are you from? I am from Jericho. Yeah, um, you came in 1948? I am came in 1948, yes. 1948, ah. Yes. Ashkenazi, Sephardic, Moroccan? And, uh, and, uh, Bethlehem, Bejala. Oh, okay, okay. In Jerusalem, here beside the other side. Pastor people. Oh, my God. <laughs> The black man in America is the real yes. Jew. Say it. Say the black man in America is the real Jew. Say it. Yes. Say it. What I say? The yeah. black man in America. The, the black man in America is the real Jew. He is, he is the real Jew. There you go. Yeah. Remember that. I want you to remember yeah. that thing right there. So, I have no money. Ah. <laughs> My money was stolen ah. by white people. Ah. My money was stolen by America. I have no money. Hey, how are you? Here in Duke Village. Duke Village. Yeah? Do they like hang out anywhere or anything? Like a lot? I, I see a lot of tourists. Yeah. Here, here, it's a tourist place. Uh -huh. But if you go to the village, it's down like one kilometer from here. Yeah? One kilometer this way? Yeah? 
Hey, what are Afro Palestinians? Mm. Mm. He said, he said, uh, one kilometer this way. Right? Yep. It'll be in the middle of the village. Middle of the village. Yeah. And that it worked out. Some of my brothers. You're welcome. How are you, brother? Fine. All right. Hi, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, in America that went into slavery on ships. Mm -hmm. According to the Bible, who do you think they are? I don't know according to the Bible, but I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And the black people here, they came, you know, they used to go to Mecca and they had to come to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, they love the, the countries here and they stay here. Okay. This book. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, let me show you this. And, and, and the book of Revelation, chapter, it describes Yeshua. How do you call him? Esau? How do you call his name? Esau. Esau. Okay, what, read that. Chapter 1, verse 14. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So wool is the hair of black people. Like he has wool hair. Wool hair. Go ahead. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine. He drank wine. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass. This color here is brass. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. So if you burn that, what color is it going to get? Like darker. Right. right. Like your color. Right? Like that. So you should never say you don't know what color. It's right there. It's in the Bible. It's in the scriptures. He's a black man. Like he looks like you, he looks like me. It's not a matter who looks like what, like who. Mm -hmm. It's a matter that he came, God sent him to us, and he have a message for us. Okay. All the prophets have messages for the human beings. Mm -hmm. That's that's the point. So let me show you this. Watch this. Get Deuteronomy. I just want to show you this thing. Because that's the universal love, right? Everybody love, love, come together. Okay. We heard that in America too. And you know in America when they teach us that, the black people, like you, always on the bottom. Selling trinkets, trying to make money, but guess where the white people are? On top, ruling everything. It depends, what do you want to be? Watch this. Get Deuteronomy 28. Watch what Moses says. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses is speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel. He said if you break God's commandments, you're going to be cursed. But let's see what some of the curses are. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Let's talk about slavery. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh -huh. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No military might, no economic might, no political might to reunite the people again as one. Jump down to verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So Moses said to the 12 tribes, you shall serve your enemies if you break God's laws. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh-huh. In hunger. If you want food, you got to serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in thirst. If you want water, you got to serve your enemies. And in nakedness. If you want clothing, you got to serve your enemies. And in the want of all things. Uh huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Now, let me ask a question. What race of people during the time of slavery had yokes of iron on their neck? Who did that happen to? Think. You seem smart. I hope so. What group of people had yokes of iron? Give me that flyer. Give me that. Who did this happen to? Who had yokes of iron on their neck? Like you see here in these pictures. Who did that happen to? It's, 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 it doesn't happen in this country. Right, where did it happen? It's happened in, in Africa, we took them to Europe. And... Right, so guess who Moses Mo, How do you call his name? Masha? Moses? How do you call him? Moshe? Musa. So who do you think he's, he's talking, remember, he's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. But this happening 200 years ago. Yes. Years ago. Right. Guess when this happened? Guess when Moses was prophesied? It was a future prophecy of what was going to happen. Listen. You understand? Now watch this. Give me verse 68. Okay. We got to listen to what Moses says. Watch this. Verse 68. 
and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt is Greek. It means bondage. Go ahead. Again with ships. You will go into bondage, slavery with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Uh huh. Thou shalt see it no more again. You wouldn't see your homeland no more again. Go ahead. And there. When you get off the ships. Go ahead. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You get off the ships and be sold to your enemies. Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And bond women. That means slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Like you see in these pictures here. The ships. Now, I'm going to ask you again. Remember I asked you at the beginning of our conversation about the black Americans, right? Everything we just read so far, they had yokes of iron on their neck. They were sold to their enemies on ships. It all happened to them. Okay? You understand that? Let's start with one thing. Okay, let's start. Let's go. The slaves, they are not only the black people in this world. So, okay. So you mean the Chinese are slaves? No, 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 no. There is white slaves. There is Where? black slaves. Where's the white slaves? They are, they are... You can't see them anymore because they are, you know, white slaves. Yep. White slaves? Where? I've, I've never seen these people. Where are they at? In this country. In any country? Before, Point to any country where they before, are. Before Islam, mm -hmm. the slaves was the, 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 the person who, who took them and sold them, they are slaves. Really? White people? people? White, black. Really? Them. Watch this. Get, um... Uh, Lamentations 4 and 8. What, let me show what the Bible describes the Jews. Watch this. Watch this. Very funny. It's, and it's funny because the answers you're giving, the same thing white people say in America. They say, oh, we don't know about slavery. Read that. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 8. Their visage Meaning is, their faces is blacker than a coal. So they're describing the Jews in the Bible. Their visage, their faces are blacker than a coal. Go ahead. They are not known in this street. And you would not recognize the true... Jews in the streets. This is why you say, I don't know the black people, the black people. You don't know who they are. The Bible describes the Jews as black, Yeshua or Esau as black. Everybody, the holy people are black. We want to meet people to teach on the street. That's what we want. That's what we want to do. So then, it takes us to go to, where do we go? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Oh, this was a good one now. This is also, the tomb is on one level, above it is a room that they say was the room that the Last Supper was held. I also assure you that it is not. You had Syria in the north, and you had Jordan. Aruba or Ibo? 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 Did some cuts from the street, basically interviewed a whole bunch of people, um, mainly uh, Edomites. Um, they couldn't prove in the Bible who they were or um, about them being the real Jews according to the Bible. Known as Aeliade Capitolina, the Roman uh, center in this province, in this area of, of, of Judea. This was a marketplace in every Roman era. We went, we went down there yes. and we see a lot of images yeah. of Jews yeah. that look cute, like you. Yeah, images, like you. You mean, images you mean images you mean people you mean Jewish painting oh, uh, there in the cardo? Yes. Yeah. There. Now I was curious where in the Bible Why is he posting? He's getting he likes my ears. Oh, where in the Bible or Torah Tanakh can I find the description of the Jews? 
like yourself. Where can I, what scripture could I reference? That's my, that's my only question. I'm just what curious. do you mean? Uh, people Meaning, change. People change from from, uh, from black from, to white. From, from when they were to, to who they are. So you mean like so this? How, how, how would I find people like me in the Torah when people are so changed? Okay, why, let me show you this. You've read Song of Solomon, right? <laughs> oh, you heard of you heard of Yo? The prophet Yo. Look what he says here in Yo 30 verse 30. Okay. Look, 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 look. I want you to make sure I'm not making it up. It says, my skin but is Sheba, black but upon Sheba, me. But Sheba was black. Yeah. Oh, so you know that? Yeah, yeah. So then how did it get white in the paintings and things? I'm curious. How did it get white in the yeah, paintings? In paintings oh, okay. all over. I didn't notice that they were all white. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. They were white. But in the, when you watch um, the programs on about history, they do have black people portraying. The they always got us people. in the background. Yeah. They got us way in the back yeah. carrying fruit. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't no? think so. Well, maybe history history depicted it. it yeah. Black people in that way. Right. But it depicts us carrying food. More, things are more. Um, and, you know, I, I, don't I don't know. I haven't studied things all. So okay. My biblical knowledge is is, limited? Is, all, is only so much. I don't know the Bible inside. Oh, okay. But you know English. So. You know English. Yeah. Okay. So what does this mean? Just, just help me out here. In case I'm, I'm mistaken. In Song of Solomon, chapter, if I can just find, here we go. Solomon is a Jew. Yeah, Solomon is a Jew, and he says something here that I, I, we were confused about. It says uh, here, song, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. We jump down here in verse five. It says, "What? I am black, but." Humbly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So what does that mean? He says Solomon is evil. That means he's evil. He's talking <laughs> metaphorically. He's not talking about his physical tone. He's not? See, because I'm, I, if, if, if I'm caught up in sin, mm. I could say, you know, they got dark and light. Okay, it's, it's a contrast between speaking uh, again. So that black means sin? Do you have another reference that proves that black means sin? No, it doesn't mean sin. He's speaking metaphorically. Metaphorically, he says, I... himself. If, if I have hatred towards someone, I right. can say that my heart is black. It's not uh, physically black. Mm. Okay? But light and darkness is quite contrast between good and evil, etc. like that. It has mm. nothing to do with people, people's skin tones. So what about this? Job, chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. So that's not skin? I don't know this particular word and what it's referencing, but I can tell you this, is that it's not referring to... Just as I said, my heart is black. But what about his skin? Can I not say that my heart is black? You can say that. Exactly. Does that mean you can my say heart it's is black? But watch this. Oh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Okay. The, the reference to sin in the Bible is not black. I'm going to show you what it is. It's several things. I'm going to show you what it is. Watch uh, this. We're done here. No, Sorry, come John. on, Chuck. Come on. Thank you. i got to find my group again here. Muslim, but you're a Christian. Yes. So I like, what's your name? Moti. Moti, I'm Nathaniel. I see some paintings here, pictures here. Yes. And my question is, where, you know the Bible, where in the Bible could you take me that to prove that Jesus or Mary looks like that? <laughs> It looks like what? This, these images. Ah, uh, Huh? No? I don't know. You don't know? Wow. My, my question was about the images of Jesus and Mary. Yes. Where in the Bible could I read that that's how they looked? I'm mean, like they, European. How they looked the, like? Okay, the, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, when he was um, um, 
before uh, Friday when he was crucified, uh, uh, they put uh, one of the cloth on his face. <laughs> so all the face uh, was printed on the cloth. So we have the, 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 the way Jesus looked. So where in the Bible can we read that? Okay, I don't know exactly where, but uh, if you ask one of the priests, he will tell you. Okay. And the other thing about uh, Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mother Mary, there is in the Assyrian convent, mm -hmm. uh, the real, the real uh, uh, face of Mother Mary, mm -hmm. because one of the disciplines he was painting, I think it was Peter, mm -hmm. so he painted her face exactly the same she looks. So, so if you go to the Syrian convent, you can... I, I went there, I asked. Here's my question. Jesus was a descendant of King Solomon, right? Yes. King Solomon was like his great, great, great grandfather. Yes. So what does this mean when Solomon writes about himself in Song of Solomon, chapter yes. 1, verse 5? I am... What does that word say? I am black. What does that mean? Go on. We can you can't stop in the Bible. Oh, okay, on one let's read the whole thing. Okay. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So, for example, Kedar was one of the sons of Ishmael. What do you want to, 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 to reach for? Oh, you're very quick on your feet. King Solomon was a black man. Therefore, Jesus would have to be black. Why? It's common sense. But Jesus, he wasn't born like other people. Oh, no? He was born from the Spirit of God, if you are carrying the... So let me ask you this. You heard of the okay. prophet Job? Yeah, yes. Job. You believe in that? Well, uh, I, uh, you, you want to, to relate Jesus to as Job a, a, a... Okay. Jesus wasn't born like you and me. Okay, all right? let's talk about he was, uh, he was born from the Spirit of God. What does this mean? Come, come, okay, mama. Busy, come, 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 come. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're busy. You're busy. In the Shroud of Turin is garbage. The Shroud of Turin is trash. It's been proven to be false. Um, we also visited a church called the Holy Sepulchre Church. And inside they had um, dark images of our forefathers, the real images. However, they were secluded in one part of the church where there was no light on the ceiling. And the tour guides did not bring anybody through that place. It was, it was wicked as hell. Wicked as hell. It was just completely isolated from everybody. Else. Behind me is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is the place that when Pope Urban in France, in Claremont, France, in the year 1096, he told his followers, he, he actually is the one who incited the, the beginning of the European Crusades, which were nothing less than an invasion of Northeast Africa. He was on record. He said, come, let us put our dissensions and quarrels aside, let all our, our, at our, our controversy cease. He said, enter upon the road that leads to the Holy Sepulchre, supposedly the grave site of Yeshua and he said rest that land wrestle take by force rest that land from the wicked race so there was there and this is on record this is what began the Crusades and so the racial element was very clear but in 1096 who was living here in the Holy Land it wasn't Israel anymore but it was Ishmael it was the original Ishmael it was the Moors that was that was unclean and so the Romans, there were not enough of them to try to maintain control if things got out of hand. So they, they would, they would, they would accommodate certain things that the Jews. Ah, uh, you know that. Oh, very good. We're, 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 we're here to claim our land. What was that again? Say that again. I don't know. Got out of hand, so they, they would, they would, they would accommodate certain things that the Jews. Things that the Jews. Things that the Jews. Things that the Jews. Ah, you know that. Oh, very good. We're, we're here to claim our land. What was that again? Say that again. I don't know. Oh, now you don't know. He said we the lost tribe. He said we are the lost tribe. Jig is and he's up. Absolutely right. <laughs> Baruch, no more lost. Found. Right now we're about to go into the Holy Sepulchre, and we hope that there are some Christians who can help us out on this journey that we're about to undertake.
called idolatry. So let's go straight to the black images. We'll we, we get there. All of these people are lined up to give the chance to kiss. To kiss the area where the, where the crucifix went in the ground, supposedly. It wasn't here. Note, note, note the, the floor. Did you know that man? This was the original paintings of Mary and Christ. It's black people. That's the correct, according to the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremiah 14, 2, Lamentations 4, 8. Yeah. See that? No praises. Yeah, okay. Anyway, black, according to scriptures, Mary was black, Jesus was black. Did y'all know that? Now you know. I'm going to give you the scripture. Revelation 1.14 tells you Jesus was black. Jeremiah 14.2 says the tribe of Judah is black. All right. And Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5, it says King Solomon was black. Yeah, that, that ain't it. You knew that? Oh, good. Where are you from? Yeah. Here? You from Israel? Yeah. Okay. Why do you got all these tattoos? You're not religious at all. No. <laughs> and this is your wife? Yeah. About to be. About to be. Well, yeah. congratulations to the two of you. So you're Palestinian? Israeli, Israeli. Israeli. Okay. So you knew Solomon was black like that picture. You knew that? I heard Like that's Mary and Jesus there. Like, get, get closer. I want to see it. Closer. All right. They were black. And it's, that's what the scriptures say. I mean, it, it, it makes sense. sense. Yes, but now look at this. Look at this. This is false. You cannot. I ask people in here, show me in the Bible where Jesus looked like that. They say, I don't know. It's not in the Bible. I don't think it's possible that anyone from the, the Bible were like... Europeans. Europeans, oh, European, oh, like right. white Europeans. Right. Because it's like, it was all happened here in like Middle East, next yeah. to like... Africa. Middle East, Africa, mm -hmm. it's like everything. Everyone here have like darker skin. You know the Bible a little bit? Remember when that Herod was going to kill baby Jesus? And the angel came to Joseph and said, take the young child and his mother and flee into, you remember they ran to? No. Egypt. Right. That's in Africa. Yes. Before the Ottomans, before the Arabs took it over. Yeah. So they're all black. Yeah. Probably. In order to hide there, you have to be black. Probably, yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> it is so good meeting the two of you again. What's your name? Nathaniel. 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 I'm What's your name, young lady? Naomi. Naomi, congratulations on your future wedding. <laughs>
Ethiopian church, which we're not even going to get into, even in that church they have a painting depicting the Queen of Sheba visiting King Solomon, and the images are basically white, with the Queen of Sheba is basically barely, barely pink. But there's an explanation for that. There's a Greek chapter called the Revelation of the Son. This is called the Chapel of the Invention of the Cross, and I do mean invention, but they meant to say discovery of the cross. You had people praying to rocks and all of that. Yep. The one lady was telling me if I put my ear to some granite, you could hear swords. Mm -hmm. I put my ear to the, I think I got gangrene on that thing. <laughs> they go scrub my ear off. It heals me? Listen, listen. Oh, listen. You said listen. Close your eyes. Listen. I don't hear nothing. That's it. Listen. That's it. Bishop, you might get an infection. Be careful. <laughs> I hear nothing. Okay. I don't, maybe it doesn't work on black people. <laughs> Let me wipe the road. Let's go. Let's go to the. What the hell was that? Uh, it was crowded. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was very crowded. It's a large tourist attraction, and like you said, we did cut from the street, interviewing many people. Primarily, we actually the first people we interviewed were some Nigerian brothers and sisters. That was the first. Yes, place. yes. And that was cool. After that, you know. Uh, the brothers from Demona, they didn't uh, appreciate that too much. But we told them that's what we do. This is IUIC. We about the Father's business. So we get inside the Holy Sepulchre, like you said, and um, the brother's taking us on a tour. And I'd already told them, we don't do tours. Mm -hmm. We're not here to tour or sightsee. We're here to work. So anyway, he continues telling us about some Caesar Borgia stuff. We just walked off. And we did more interviews and talked to people. Ah, uh, I tell you, I don't know about that spirit out here. Oh, this is a synagogue. Hello, hello. I think that's a synagogue in there. I saw Amalek in there, praying and worshiping. Okay, what is this? Church, Greek Orthodox. Greek Orthodox Church. Yes. We can't go in? No. Why not? How come? Go down, please. No photo, please. Okay. How do you know I don't want to go in and pray? Come on, come on, come on, Mishnah, come. Come on, don't worry. Esau is the devil. Right. All praises to the Most High. Esau is going into captivity. The real Jews are black. And say yes. The real Jews are black. Say da. Are you implying that we don't keep the commandments? 
<laughs> oh yeah? I would have said yeah. The tall guys do? Yeah. But Israel, when it took over the old city, they would not allow a university to operate because universities are known to be uh, incubators for, you know, popular revolutionary thought. Are forbidden to come past that point because it would be a, a, a an, uh, an incitement. It would be an incitement. Once you pass that green door, you're on the Temple Mount, and you're right there, about a stone's throw from the mosque, the uh, Dome of the Rock. And so that's the first level. So no Jews are allowed over here. No. No so-called Jews. Not on not on this side. And here, at that point, if you even said you were Muslim, they would probably ask you to recite certain prayers to prove that. This is what's called Prison Gate Street. This is the African Quarter. Of course it is. Brethren, brothers, how are you? Where is Brother Ali? Ali? Is he home? Before we go in the seat, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. On either side was a prison during the time of the Ottoman Empire, okay, and even before during the time of what was called the Arab Revolt against the Ottoman Turks. Okay. And so those who were sentenced to death were on one side. I forget. He'll tell you. And the others who were sentenced to life were put on the other side. So you still even see the bars here now. Let's, let's walk through. You're going to see brothers and sisters living up in here. Like when did this came when out? When this came out. <laughs> okay. Oh, they live here. I ain't going to put the camera on there. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey. How are you, sister? Is it right to film in here? Until they say something. Oh, right. If they don't say something. So they live here. I'm a regular. They live here. These are these are these are living quarters. And it was recent, it was renovated from since the time that uh, Bev Smith came here. They renovated the area and actually improved their living conditions. Because we were actually exposing them to, you know, the fact that you oh. had this African presence here that is not on the map anywhere. There's, there's at least 40 to 50 families here that go back and families in, 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 in the Arabic tradition are very large families and what they gen generally like to do is expand by building but they, they don't give them building permits because there's, I mean, there's only so much more you can add on. If they tried to build on and add on they would have their, 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 their units demolished and they would be fined and what have you. So, um, Population control. Yeah. And so they're forced to have to leave out. Mm -hmm. And and because of the oppressive environment, you know, a lot of them prefer to leave and go to Jericho or somewhere else to live. Mm -hmm. We actually know one of the families back there. Again, if we go visit, they we sit down and have to have tea, you know. Right. And that's that's the that's the that's the custom in this part of the world. So we'll go back to the other side and see if Brother Ali is being exposed to Okay. You're in the Muslim quarter. Okay. In the African quarter, actually. African quarter. Yeah, there's two sides right here. Hey, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You read the Bible? You read the Bible? No, I read it like before, like a long Abraham, time. Abraham, yeah, you know Abraham, Abraham, you know Isaac. In the Quran too, you can't find like all the prophets do. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know all the prophets in the Bible are black. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yeah. So if they're all black, then who are these white people around? Who are they? Actually, you know, there's law, it's this country, you know, you can't find a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. too, many, too many kinds. Actually, a lot of quarters in this country. How many quarters? Five quarters. Five quarters. Armenian quarters, Christian quarters, Jewish quarters, mm. Muslim quarter, and African quarter, right? Mm. Mm. You know, we got history right here, like you can say, like 200 years. Mm. 200 years? In this country. Okay, okay. What part of you always been from Palestine? Oh, yeah, from Palestine. Afro Palestinian. You're part of Africa. Oh, you African, uh, Afro American? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Afro Palestinian. You, you, you know what? We went, in, we went into slavery on ships, right? Yeah. Did you know that was in the Bible? No. Ah. Hey, help me out, help me out. Let me show you something. This is Moses speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Start at verse 15. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, 
if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he told Moses to tell us, if you break the commandments, there's going to be a curse. Mm -hmm. Now watch the curse, verse yeah. 48. Verse 48, therefore thou shalt, excuse me, therefore, 32, 32. verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, yeah. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand. So what does it mean your sons and daughters shall be given to another people? That means what? Actually, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Your English ain't that good. In the Muslim, uh -huh. we don't trust like the colors. We trust just like a good person. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you go to me, I go to you. It doesn't matter which religion you are. Mm -hmm. Because my Prophet Muhammad, he's saying that. You know, Prophet Muhammad in history, he's be like in sitting in a tent, mm -hmm. okay? And his neighbor, he's be like in Jewish. Just like in these stores. Yes. Okay, all the time the Jewish guy is be like, you know, throw like bad thing to the Prophet Muhammad. So all the neighbors came, Prophet Muhammad, why are you quiet? Why are you saying that? Why are you, why are you talking to him? Mm -hmm. Why you don't let us uh, go to him to like, say you do like a bad thing? Mm -hmm. So Prophet Muhammad just got like big mind. Big mind. Big mind. He's sitting in himself, he's talking like his neighbors, like, you know, this. Jewish guy is mm. once mm. he's gonna stop everything. And the same day in the night, that guy, Jewish guy, like he's get sick. Mm. The second day, Muhammad, he's staying in his tent, like he's saying, like he's asking, where's that guy? Mm -hmm. Why is he throw like a bad thing to me? Mm -hmm. There's following like Jewish guy is sick. Mm -hmm. So Prophet Muhammad stood up and he's going to the his tent and he's visiting visit him. And he's saying like how you feel in stuff like this. Right. So this guy like he said, well, I'm always I do like bad thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this guy he's came to me and he's asking how I'm feel today. Mm -hmm. That's like you know, that's like in stories, like right. good stories to hear. So Eric, so what did that mean that we just read? Did you understand that? Uh, not actually everything. You don't not understand everything. everything? Not everything. Watch the read it again. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That means slavery. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So you would never get your sons and daughters back. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. I'm going to show you the slave ships. Remember I told you we were in the okay. slave ships. Verse 68. And verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is Greek, it means bondage. And mm -hmm. the Lord shall bring you into bondage yeah. again with ships. Yeah. Right? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. The promised land you wouldn't see no more. Mm -hmm. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So who went into slavery on a ship and was sold? Who is that describing? Well, like you're talking about like a white man. No, no the white, the white man didn't go in slavery on yeah. ships. Yeah. We did, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. You understand that history? Yeah. Yeah. So that Moses, how do you call Moses in, in, in your language? How do you call his name? Moshe? Moshe. Moshe. Musa. 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 So Musa is saying the 12 tribes of Israel would go into slavery on ships. Mm -hmm. That only happened to us. Yeah. It didn't happen to anybody else. Yes. Right? Yes. He's listening, but yeah. <laughs> it didn't happen. Does yeah, he speak English? Like, like, uh, he's working with me. Oh, he I'm works with you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. What do you do? Oh, you just explain that's what they all do right there? Yeah. No, it's not like we're not police. Oh, okay. It's really just protection is like. Oh, okay. protection. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. like, you know, big store in this country. Mm -hmm. From start and never stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good, Aaron. Good. Nice yeah. meeting you. Yeah. You are welcome. If you want to drink some tea. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Come you. in. Thank you. Community center. And you see what they have as a, uh, as, a, as, a as a wall plate. It's Africa with Israel in the northeastern corner. So they're very clear about the African presence here in this land. They are the African presence here in this land. So he's gonna tell you a little bit about the history to help you, give you some more information. Walk by the wall. No, 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 no. What else happened in there? Oh, oh you mentioned black images. Yeah. You mentioned black images. The wall. 
the what wall? The, oh, yeah, the, the wailing wall. wall. Yeah. The humping wall. The humping wall. The, the, the davening wall. Right. The davening wall. So we wanted to go down there. Um, we go down and they tell us we had to wear a yarmulke. Mm -hmm. So what did you tell a guy? I said, absolutely not. Uh, I said, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach said no. All right, and according to the scriptures, we're not supposed to cover our head. Obviously, when we're walking through that, that area, we're meditating on the Most High's laws and His word. So that's a form of prayer. So the Bible tells us not to cover our head. And um, I told him that. He said, well, it was a sign of disrespect. Please cover your head or wear like a baseball cap or something. We told him, oh, we don't have that. So uh, we proceeded to walk off and he was like, it's, you know, it's a sign of disrespect. And he was like, well, this camp, we're going to do what the Bible said. We're not going to put on no keepers on our head. Some other camps might, but we're not covering our head. As y'all can see, you got the uh, Wailing Wall here. This is not the last wall of uh, the temple that uh, was rebuilt during the time of uh, Zerubbabel and um, Joshua. This, however, is the extension of the wall that King Herod had built. It was a fort. That is what they call the Wailing Wall. Okay? And in the wall, everybody puts supposed to put their prayers in it if they want some kind of blessing from God. It's superstition. Okay? It's not going to happen. The Western Wall Plaza did not always look like this. Had I known we were coming here this morning, I'd have grabbed this photograph I normally bring. It's a photograph taken in 1922, and it's, it's actually uh, with the caption by the photographer, and it's called the Moorish or the Moors Quarter. So all this was bulldozed two days after the Israelis got hold of this particular uh, uh, it came into the old city. They bulldozed this area. That was 1967. 1967. Two days after they came into the old city, they bulldozed this area. And, the, and, in, the, and in doing so, they, they destroyed people like Ali's homes. I'm just curious to see if they're going to make me put on a yarmulke. I'm not putting on no damn yarmulke. Well, I see them grabbing it right now, but I think they're doing the wooden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, if we cover our head, we're covering Yeshua HaMashiach. So, oh, that's the only way we could go to. If you have any hat, it's okay. Huh? A hat. If you have any hat, you can use a hat. It. Oh, now we don't have hats either. We just wanted to see the um the wall of Herod, Herod's wall. So, to respect the plus. Oh. Only to respect the plus. Oh, okay. If okay. you want to go without. Uh, Keep eye, you can go, but uh, to respect the plus, so you need to cover the eyes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. And uh, we went to the wailing wall, and um, we wrote our prayers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we wrote our prayers for ha to Hashem, mm -hmm. and we put it into the wall, the prayers. So from there, now where was the brother from Demona? He had left us, right? He was yeah. Like, he, he said us. he wasn't going down there, and um, I think it was more fear, if anything, because we stand out, you know. We, we were. They told us not to. What did they tell us to wear? Sandals or something? Com something comfortable? Yeah, something day? comfortable to go down there. But yeah, because we would do a lot of walking. Right. So right. we had on our, our our camp uniform, as you see us now, with our boots. He told us so not to wear our stompers. That's yeah. what he said. He yeah. said, "Wear something comfortable. Don't wear your stompers." Basically, what they were saying was. Don't wear that uniform tomorrow. Right. That's so, how I perceive that. So basically what we're doing now, we're disrespecting the wall. We're disrespecting Headrod's wall because we're not covering our heads. But according to the Bible, we're not supposed to cover our heads. And we ain't going to cover our heads. We ain't putting that damn keeper on our heads. Yeah, 
What did it say, Bishop? Death to all Esau and all I do me. Rise, Israel, rise. All praise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cat, what you wrote? Isaiah 14, 1 to 5, Christ is black and Esau is going into slavery. In hmm. all Esau. Hey, hey, Bishop, rock. I'm supposed to rock? <laughs> Baruch Hashem. <laughs> Listen, that's how we do it at IUNC. We ain't putting on no yarmulke. We ain't doing what they say. We the real inhabitants of the land. Y'all better put some respect on it. You understand that? <laughs> now, as you know, as you know, there was another congregation that came out here. They was forced to wear their hats. They could even come in here with fringes. At IUIC, we don't do that. We keep the commandments of God. We follow no man's orders but the Heavenly Father. We ain't putting on no keeper. All right? Shalom. It's free. Take one and share. Okay, God bless you. Have a great day. Hold on, hold on, hold on, let me, I'm speaking to him. Wait a minute. What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? My name is John. What is your name? Pino. Pino. What is your question? How you know this man is black or white? Okay. Okay. Stand right there. I'm going to answer your question. Okay? Give, before that, give me uh, uh, John, uh, the two shall make you feel first. You got that? Me. The book of John, chapter 8, listen, verse, listen. verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. This is Christ speaking. Christ, the black Messiah. He said, you shall know the truth. Read. And the truth shall make you free. The only thing that can set you free is the truth. You agree, right? No order. You ask a question. You say you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now your question is, what is the color of Christ? I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you. Just wait. Revelation. That's why I am a young one, Verse 1. The book of Revelation. You got to listen. You got to listen. Chapter 1, verse 1. I can the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What revelation mean? Revelation means to reveal. The revealing. The revealing of Jesus Christ. Right? Jump to verse 14, uh, 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So now John, look, he saw a man like unto the Son of Man in the midst of seven candlesticks. That is the Manoah. You see right here? That is the Manoah, the seven candlesticks. Wait. Go, go. You got a lesson. You got a lesson. Listen. Go with a garment down to the foot. So he saw them. He saw Christ. Clothed with a garment all the way down. Read. When John is and girt about the belt with a golden girdle, so he also saw him with a gold belt. Read. His head and his hair. So now he's looking at his hair and his beard. He's going to discover the look. Like. Were white, like wool. So he said, Christ's hair and his beard were white like wool. Who got woolly hair? 
they need the so-called yes. black men. We got woolly hair. Yes. You see your hair? That's woolly hair. That's what you got? You see my hair? That's what I got. You see hair? That's called woolly hair. These don't have no woolly hair. That's woolly hair. That's right. That's woolly hair. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. Wait, like war. As white as snow, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why his eyes as a flame of fire? Why? Because Christ, hey, stop, cut it out. Because why? Why? Because Christ drank a lot of wine. We and his feet. Now he look at his feet. He look at Christ's feet. What did he see? Like unto fine bread. What is the color of brass? Brass. A uh, uh, brass is brown. You see this? That's brass. That's the color of brass. He, as if he burned in a furnace, if the Christ look like he's burned in a furnace, anything you burn, what color it become? Black. Black. Christ was a very dark man. Hey. Christ was a very dark man. So, what we just read? We just read the description of Christ, the right Messiah. That's what we just read. There is no in the Bible to show you what Christ is a black, is a white man. Step back, step back, step back. Step back. I'm going to show you why. Luke 21. Luke 21. You got to know history in order to understand. Help with the geography. Luke 21, start at verse 19. The book of Luke. Chapter 21, verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your soul. And when ye shall see Jerusalem, come pass with arms. When you shall see Jerusalem, come pass with arms. This was around the year 33 AD. Christ was making reference to Rome coming. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Desolation is what? Destruction. Destruction is near. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Flee where? Flee to the mountains. So he was telling them to run wait, for their lives. Wait, 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 and let wait, them wait, which are in the midst of it no, depart hey, out. And if you're in Jerusalem, wait, depart wait, out of it. Go. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. So it says, and if you're outside Jerusalem, don't come back. Where you are. Watch this, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. You had certain Israelites go against Rome called the Zealots. I be there ten and years. shall be led away captive into the nations. Read it again. And shall be led away captive into the all nations. And shall be led. Those Zealots that stayed to fight were led away captive into all nations, meaning slaves. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Who would take over Jerusalem? Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. That's the Goyim. The Goyim would take over Jerusalem. That's right. Now your your question was, how come about geography, right? Now I'm going to show you King Solomon. You heard of him, right? Give me Song of Solomon, chapter 1. I'm going to show you the ethnicity of the Israelites and what they look like. You heard of King Solomon. Come on. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. And read verse 1. For me. What's your name? Solomon. Oh, your name is Solomon. Whoa! All right then, Solomon. Watch this verse one. The book of Song of Solomon, the, chapter one, verse one, which is Solomon. Solomon, what did I just say? Are you listening? You know most of them are drunk here, right? Most of them are drunk. Read it again. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. So Solomon wrote this, verse five. I am black. But come, I am black. I'm Yishakor. I am black. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So according to the Bible, what does Solomon say? Is that in Hebrew over there as well? No, that's in English. That's in English. That's why I gave it to you. Anyi Shakur. Well, you have it in Hebrew because Hebrew is the. Yeah, that, that's, but what does that mean? You understand English? What, okay, he says I am black. What could it mean other than his color? His what? His feelings, the whole song. His feelings are black? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Give me Job 30. You know what's funny about that? Yeah. Because a lot of Europeans, when we pull that, you always get a, a, a metaphorical meaning behind it. 
Okay? Like you say, it doesn't mean skit, right? Watch this. Job 30 verse 30. Come on. The book of Job. Chapter 30. Verse 30. My skin is black upon me. What does that mean? You heard of Job. The prophet Job. He says, my skin is black upon me. What does that mean? Oh, wow, Solomon, wait a minute. Question. I got a no, you gotta answer this first. Because okay, I, I know you're not an ignorant man. You're not. You might be deceitful, but you're not ignorant. So when it says my hey, when it says my skin is black upon me, my skin. You have skin, Solomon. Hey, back up. I have skin. Hey, back up. Whose skin is black? Okay, read it again, Job 33. My skin is black. I gave you two scriptures and you went around both. Of them. Okay, what color is Job according to that? Okay, good. Now what's your question? Wait a minute. Let's give the brother a hand. He admitted Job was black. That's what it says. Oh crazy. Now what's your next question? All right. So my question is, why am I not black? Why are you not black? Very good question. All the you are. Remember what we are bad people. Uh huh. Yes. You are bad, bad people. Explain to Morocco. Okay. Bad people is one. Okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you. Hey, 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 what's no. with this guy? I'm going to show you. Don't step on the side. Okay, so now, okay, you heard of uh, Miriam, right? Why I'm with, why I'm with Miriam? Miriam, yeah. Let me show you. What does she look like according to the Bible? Do you know? You ever read the Bible? The Torah? Okay, let's go to the book of Numbers. Stay with me. Numbers chapter 12. Hey, stay with me. You are bad people. Numbers chapter 12 and yeah. verse 10. When you come so, to talk Solomon, about right? Or like Shlomo. How do you say it? Shlomo. 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 Watch this. Numbers chapter 12, After verse that, 10. We're going to start there. You are very big shoes. Miriam. Miriam was the oldest sister of Aaron and Moses. Now watch this. Remember in Numbers 12 when Moses married the Ethiopian woman? What? Right? So remember she got angry with Moses. And God had a message for Miriam. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam become, became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. Wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned, let her not be as one dead. So when God got angry with Miriam, what did he do to her skin? Okay. Wait, answer the question. He turned her white. Right? He turned her right. white. Let's give him a hand. Slow mo. Slow mo. Good job. Yes. Okay. So he turned her white. Mm -hmm. Egyptians right now. Hey. Are they, are they white? Okay, I'm glad you said it. They're, they're not white and they're not black. They're brown. Exactly. So it makes sense that she was brown as well. Like people that live here, the Palestinians that live here. But look at you. Look at you. Slow mo. Slow mo. Come on, slow mo. Look, you're not brown. Brown? Look, You're not black. Good. Let dad. me see your dad. Let me see your dad. Is he Israeli? Yeah, he is Israeli. From Spain. From Morocco. Okay. From Morocco. Okay. You may be Arab, right? Huh? Somewhat I, I Arab, have Moroccan. A here. I have a Moroccan. Moroccan. Okay. So now, Shlomo. So far, we answered your question in Luke 21, when Christ said that Jerusalem would be trodden down of the goyim. So that's the goyim would control the land. Hence, your modern-day Israelis. 
Yes! No. Who controls this land, the Palestinians? Got here 70 years ago. No, no, no. What are you talking Wait about? a minute. The Israelis just got here seven years ago? The modern Israelis here right now? Yeah, they got here they're, seven they're years ago? 70, my Oh, you said 70. 1948, correct. But, and before that, in 70 AD, who took it over? Who took it over in 70, 70 AD? The Romans. The Romans and Israelis. Guess what? I'm going to shock you now. They're the same people. That's right. They just speak different languages now. It's up. Because well, I'm a show. Watch this. Go to Genesis 25. I'm going to give you a good history now. You know? Right. You heard of Jacob? Wait, then why was my family exiled? I'm, the same I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. You just got to be patient with me. Right. Let's go back to the book of Barashaf. Is that how you say it? Barashaf? Barashaf. It means what? Beginning, right? Genesis 25. Let's start at verse 21. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. She got pregnant. And the children struggled together within her. Uh -oh. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? I, and she went to inquire of the Lord. So Rebekah was having trouble in her stomach. She's saying, if Hashem has blessed me, why am I having trouble in my stomach? Come on. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So this is the beginning of two nations. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And two manner of people shall be separated from her bowels. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Able to endure great hardships. And the elder shall serve the younger. Uh -huh. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now we know they weren't identical because it said two manner of people shall be separated. So there was, what's that called? Fraternal twins. Fraternal. And the first came, the first, and the first came his brother. No, nope, read it again. And the first came out red, when all when over, like in hairy garment. And the first came out red, Shlomo, all over, like a hairy garment. Red. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. And after the and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Wait a minute. It didn't give you Jacob's color, but it gave you Esau's color. Let's look at these pictures here for us. Ah, let's just take a look. I want this one too. I want this one too. You know, I, I, I want y'all to look at, oh you Shlomo, here's a picture of a black man here, right? Captain Isaac, can you hold that up for me? And we have an image, images of a Jesus. Which one of these would you say is red or pink? Which one? Pink is red, like a light pink. Oh, you, oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can put those down. I didn't know we had to post down here. Remember it said the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. Red, when you look at red, like you can see the red in the skin. Like, for example, you see they, the children's stuff. Can you get that on camera? Yes, sir. They are, the whole family here has white shirts. But they're not really white, Shlomo. They're red. Because you can see the blood in their complexion, okay? Now, watch this. This was a real family. They had fraternal twins. One came out looking like the mother and father, Jacob. The other came out red. This was history, actually, actual event. Don't you think the red could be blood? What's that again? Don't you think the red could be blood? Childhood? It is blood. You can, see, you can see it in their skin. Like you. No, I'm when talking it's, about the baby coming out. And it'd be covered oh, in no, blood. no, no, not at all. Not at all. How, uh -uh. how not at all? I'm, 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 it's telling you the first camera I read, Shlomo. Okay. You see what you do? You hear it. Now, okay, look, Shlomo. Between this skin here because and that this. Because that makes so much more sense. Who's red? Me. Look at that. Okay. Is that red? Yeah, that's red. It okay. Makes sense, right? That's you. Makes Shlomo, so that's you. Sense that the first one would come out red because of the blood, no? Where the blood be, shows through the skin. So how very about Jacob? Huh? How about Jacob? Yeah, what about well, Jacob? I'll be, obviously, be less blood after the first one. Right? Less blood? What, what, Makes hey. sense. It's logical. No. You got you to gotta give me a little bit. You gotta I can't give you a little bit, Shlomo. Little bit Shlomo, watch this. Adam, the first man, what do you think he looked like? I don't know. Let's go to Genesis. Hold, keep that on the side, Cap. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Shlomo, just bear with us. Just bear with us, okay? So far, I gave you Song of Solomon. He said, I am black. 
You didn't like that. I gave you Job 30 30. He said, My skin. He said, My skin is black. You go, Maybe it means something else. Now, I'm going to ask you a heavy question after we read this. Genesis 2 and 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The dust of the ground. So now, now I got to see if you know English. The dust of the ground meaning when God created Adam from the soil of the earth. What does it look like? What? Dust is brown. Dust is brown. Now, I want you to look at this. Let's go right back to these pictures again. Which one was made directly from the dust of the ground? Well, him and her were, and him. But what about them? So you're saying these people are descendants of Adam? No, they come from Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Yes, you, can, you all come from a black man. You all come from a black man. Now, what happened, Shlomo? Very easily. Give me Deuteronomy. I'm a hypocrite. Because Adam wasn't Judah? Watch this. Adam wasn't Judah. Adam wasn't Judah, really. No. Watch this. Watch this. I want Deuteronomy 28. Now, you're Israeli, right? Jewish? Okay. The term ish. I-S-H. What does that mean? Jewish. What does it mean? Jewish. That's a different language. That's not what Yehudi. Okay, if, if Yehudi, but if you said Jew, when people say they're Jewish in English, watch this. If I say to you, meet me, watch this. If I say to you, Shlomo, Shlomo, watch this. If I say to you, meet me around five-ish, does that mean five o'clock exactly? Or somewhere around. So you're saying that I'm Jewish? Yeah, you, you're, you're something saying. like it, yeah, but, but you're not, not the original. Right. But watch this. Right. Okay, let's let's exactly. examine. Learn some Hebrew. Oh no no, watch this. Watch this. We've done that. But watch this, Shlomo. Watch this. I'm gonna read some curses. I need Yehudi. I need Yehudi. Judah. Okay. Yehuda. Yehuda means Judah. 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 Now watch Yehudi? this. What's watch right. this. You have no Judean. I'm done here. No, you're not I'm done. Done. I'm I'm done. I want you to tell me no, about this. You don't understand Latin. Explain you this. Know. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Not, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Shlomo got angry. Shlomo got mad. That's right. Come, come back. Come. We're reading English. Come. Deuteronomy 28, 15. No, come. But it shall come to pass. But it's true. Shlomo. Hey, come around. Learn some Hebrew before you come here. Shlomo, you're not even speaking. But it shall Hebrew. come to pass. If that will not.
for years. I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't singing that no more. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.